Hello and welcome back. This is our third video in our video series for Chapter 7. My name is Miss Delia and if you're ready, let's get started with the lesson. In this video, we're going to enter into our third and final subtopic for this chapter, which is 7.3, Chromosomal Mutation. Now, here are the learning outcomes that we expect you to be able to achieve by the end of this lesson. Namely, you need to know what is chromosomal mutation and give the definition and state the two types of chromosomal mutation, which is chromosomal structure and chromosomal number mutation. Now, for each of those two types, we will learn about the different types of chromosomal structure mutation, different types of chromosomal number mutation, and also some examples of what happens to the individual, a human, when they have these types of mutation. Okay, if you're ready, let us go on to the definition. Before we can look at each type, let's define chromosomal mutation. Chromosomal mutation is defined as mutation caused by alteration or changes of chromosome structure or chromosome number. So ini adalah perubahan kepada struktur kromosom atau kepada bilangan kromosom. There are two types, as you may already guess. The first type is chromosomal structure or chromosomal aberration. It's further divided into four more types, which is deletion, duplication, inversion, and translocation. The second type of chromosomal mutation is chromosomal number mutation. Under chromosomal number, we have aneuploidy and euploidy ataupun kadang-kadang digelar sebagai polyploidy. Now, you're going to learn about what happens during each type of these mutation later. Uh, chromosomal number is a bit long and we're going to save that until later. We'll focus more on this one first. So let us look at chromosomal structure mutation or sometimes called chromosomal aberration. Okay, once again, let's begin with definition. Apa benda to chromosomal aberration? The definition is a rearrangement of certain segments of part of the chromosome. So it is referring to structural changes because of mutation. Okay, asalkan kita punya kromosom itu berubah bentuk. Mungkin ada part yang kilang, mungkin ada part yang terdouble, mungkin ada part yang terbalik, ataupun part yang tertukar dengan kromosom lain. So we are going to look at each of the four types of chromosomal aberration, which is deletion, duplication, inversion, and reciprocal translocation. In the examples that we will look at, dalam setiap contoh yang kita akan tengok lepas ni, setiap huruf itu mewakili satu gene. In the diagrams that we're going to look at after this, each of these alphabets that you see in the diagrams are going to represent one gene on the chromosome. Okay, so let us begin with the first type of chromosomal aberration, which is deletion. Deletion is defined as the loss of a segment containing one or more genes in chromosome. Asalkan ada part yang terhilang, itu digelar sebagai deletion. Ada part yang kena delete. What happens? A segment breaks off at two points and detached from the chromosome. This will produce shorter chromosomes with less genes and causing loss of genetic materials. So, kamu boleh tengok di sini, dia terputus dan terbuka, terhilang, yang lain sambung balik dan menghasilkan satu kromosom yang lebih pendek. Loss of genetic materials means kehilangan maklumat genetik. Yang terputus dan terlari itu memang tidak akan dijumpa balik semula. Dia hilang, loss. An example of disease that is caused by chromosomal deletion is Creutzfeldt syndrome. Later, we'll look a bit more about this Creutzfeldt syndrome. Okay, let's have a think. Okay, looking at this diagram, if we assume that each of these alphabets is one gene, then how many genes are being deleted in this chromosome? Berapa gene yang kena delete dalam contoh gambar di sini? 
That's right. Two genes are being deleted. C dan D kena buang. Jadi, yang kena delete adalah dua gene. Now, I'll demonstrate also with this little model of a chromosome. So, here is a chromosome model made out of paper. And as you can see, this is the centromere where I am holding it. This is the centromere. There are several genes on the shorter arm and some genes on the longer arm. When we have deletion, what happens is we are simply going to break. Okay, say for example, I want to break it here. Break at several points. Kadang-kadang keseluruhan tu hilang, kadang-kadang uh, sebagian saja satu segmen saja. And I'm going to break it here. So the part that has been cut, that has been broken, is deleted and removed. And these two will join together. So now I have a shorter chromosome and I had loss of genetic information. So I'm just going to stick this where it's meant to be. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how deletion works. Shorter chromosome. What can happen if you delete genes from a chromosome? Well, you would not have a very normal phenotype afterwards. You're not going to have the normal development. Let's look at an example using Kridusha syndrome. So Kridusha is a word that came from, I think it's a French language. So I don't know how to pronounce it in French, but it translates to cry of the cat. Bunyi menangis macam kucing. In this syndrome, it is caused by the loss of a small part of the short arm at chromosome 5. So, ini disebabkan chromosome number 5, pesakit yang ada penyakit kredusia. Chromosome number 5 yang bahagian lebih pendek itu terputus, kena delete. Symptoms of someone with kredusia syndrome, they may be mentally retarded. Okay, lambat dari segi itu besaran mental. Dan uh, bunyi bila dia menangis macam kucing meniaw. So when they cry, it sounds like a cat mewing. And this is, of course, seen more when they are infants. Okay, When they are babies, they would have the second symptom. And they are most likely to have a small head with unusual facial features. Okay, This is according to the books. Uh, ini menurut kajian saja lah. Maybe bukan semua akan ada macam ni. Tapi um, this is what we commonly associate with Kridusha syndrome. Now, let us continue with the second type of chromosomal aberration, which is duplication, penggandaan. Okay, so duplication is when a segment of a chromosome containing two or more genes will become duplicated. Ada satu segmen tu akan berganda, dia kena copy paste. And this will produce longer chromosomes with an additional set of genes, which is similar to some genes present in the chromosome. Kita akan dapat set gene tambahan yang sama atau sangat mirip dengan gene lain dalam kromosom yang sama. This is going to cause gain of genetic materials. Kita akan tambah genetic material. So we look at here, if each alphabet represents one gene, how many similar genes are found in this chromosome? Berapa gene di sini sama dengan bahagian lain dalam kromosom? So the answer to Axel's question is there are two genes that are similar to other genes found in the chromosome. Kalau kita tengok diagram di sebelah ni, okay, diagram ini, C warna orange sama dengan C warna putih. D warna orange sama dengan D warna putih. Once again, let us look at my paper model. So this is a paper model of a chromosome. I have gene A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. When duplication occurs, it is going to produce longer chromosomes with additional set of genes. In my example, D, E, F, is duplicated. So, kamu boleh nampak di sini, D, E, dan F digandakan. It is duplicated. And that is 
an example of a duplicated chromosome. Now let's continue with the third type of chromosomal aberration, which is inversion. In inversion, a segment of a chromosome will break off at two points. They will flip 180 degrees and rejoin to the same chromosome. So satu bahagian itu dia akan terputus. Dito balikan 180 daja dan sambung kepada kromosom yang sama. It will produce a chromosome with reverse orientation. Reverse orientation means urutan dia sudah terbalik. Sepatutnya dalam arah ini sekarang ditebalikan arah yang terbalik. Eh? And it will cause changes in the position of the gene involved. Kedudukan jin akan berubah. There is no, no gain or loss of genetic materials, but the phenotype may change. The genotype of this individual will be the same, but the phenotype may be different. And there are two types of inversions. The first is pericentric inversion, which involves the centromere, like so. So you can see from this diagram over here, pericentric inversion, bahagian yang melibatkan centromere terputus, diterbalikan dan sambung balik. Or the second type of inversion is paracentric inversion. Paracentric inversion will not involve the centromere. So if you look at the diagram below, okay, there is a segment that does not involve the centromere, breaks, flips 180, and rejoins to the same chromosome. Okay, so if an inverted segment involves the centromere, it is known as pericentric inversion. So let's come back to my paper models once again. So in this blue chromosome that I have, I have A, B, C on the shorter arm. This is the centromere. D, E, F, G, H, I is the longer arm. So let us demonstrate a pericentric inversion. So for pericentric inversion, we need to break off the segment at two points. Kita kasih putus dia. So I'm going to take it between D and C. And also between E and F. Whoopsies. There we go. Right. Now I have the A and B. I'm going to keep it over here. Sepatutnya. CDE ini terlibat dengan kromo, dengan centromere dia macam tu tapi saya akan flip dia 180 darjah so it's meant to be like this i'm flipping it 180 degrees and now i am sticking it onto my chromosome now you're going to have the same chromosome with the same amount of genetic material but it is in different orientation. Kamu boleh nampak sudah sekarang dia bukan A, B, C. Dia jadi A, B, E, D, C, F, G, H, I. So this is what we call pericentric inversion. Involves the centromere. The second type of chromosomal inversion is going to be paracentric inversion. And as you can see here, if the inverted segment does not involve centromere, it is known as paracentric inversion. So once again, let us look at my paper model. Ooh. Let's look at my paper model for that demonstration on paracentric inversion. So this one does not involve the centromere. So we're going to take this and I am going to choose to cut it between D and E and between, let me think, I'm going to cut it between G and H. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that is going to be inverted. Oh! <laughs> So we're going to take it from here, break it at two points, flip it 180 degrees, and then rejoin to the same chromosome. Let's do that on the wall. We're going to do this. Flip it like that. And rejoin here. As you can see here with my very nice camera quality, 
the order of genes from the top to the bottom is A, B, C, D, G, F, E, H, I. So this is how paracentric inversion works. Let us now continue with the fourth type of chromosomal aberration, which is chromosomal translocation. So with translocation, it is when a chromosome segment will break and reattach to another part of the same or other chromosome. So ada satu bagian itu akan putus dan sambung balik kepada satu bagian, uh, mungkin pada diri dia sendiri, mungkin kepada kromosom lain. So this will once again cause changes in position of the gene involved. Gene tertukar posisi. There is no gain or loss of genetic materials, but the phenotype may change. Genotype masih sama, phenotype berubah. And once again, we are learning two types. There is reciprocal translocation, which is most common, and non-reciprocal translocation, which is less common. Let's look at the types of translocation. Okay, kita tengok setiap satu. Kita tengok dulu reciprocal translocation. Reciprocal translocation between non-homologous chromosomes. Kalau dia antara kromosom, uh, kromosom yang homologous, contoh kromosom nombor 5 dengan nombor 5, itu adalah crossing over biasa. Mutation translocation ini hanya antara kromosom yang bukan homologous. Contoh kromosom nombor 5 dengan nombor 10, misalnya. Okay, so as you can see, from this diagram, it's going to involve exchange of information. So this first type is reciprocal translocation. It is more common. It's the most common type of translocation. It involves the exchange of segments between non-homologous chromosome. Pertukaran segment. Interchromosomal reciprocal translocation can change the linkage groups. Baiklah, kita tengok di sini, satu-satu perkataan mungkin ada yang kurang faham. Interchromosomal bermaksud di antara kromosom. Inter macam international kan? So, interchromosomal, antar, international is antara bangsa. Interchromosomal means antara kromosom. Reciprocal translocation. Perkataan reciprocal, reciprocate berbalas. Okay, so um, kalau kamu macam bab-bab kamu seling cakap pasal hubungan ni kan, uh, reciprocate in a relationship. Ada give, ada take. Ada bagi, ada ambil. So in reciprocal translocation, kromosom pertama itu dia bagi segmen, kromosom kedua pun bagi segmen. So masing-masing ada bagi dan ada terima. Dia adalah pertukaran yang adil. Interchromosomal reciprocal translocation. Pertukaran di antara kromosom yang adil. Pertukaran. And it can change the linkage groups. Kalau kamu ingat dalam chapter 6, if you remember in 6.4, you learn about the lac operon. In lac operon, we learn that the segment ada dia punya regulatory gene, ada promoter, operator, and structural genes. So, if you imagine the lac operon being cut there and changed with other chromosome, then it doesn't function like it used to be. So, bayangkan macam dalam lac operon tu, sepatutnya satu tim itu bekerja sama-sama-sama. Tapi kalau ada satu segmen terputus dan dibawa ke tempat lain, linkage groups dia tidak sama sudah. Dan um, kemungkinan tidak function, tidak function dengan se-efficient ataupun uh, dia akan menyebabkan mutation lain lah. Okay, so that is the effect. Alright, once again, it's time for our paper model demonstration. So now I have an orange chromosome here with MNOPQRS and I have a yellow chromosome with ABCDEFG. Now let us demonstrate reciprocal interchromosomal translocation with these two models. First, I'm going to break off a segment from the yellow chromosome. And then I break off 
a segment from the orange chromosome. Remember, these are non-homologous chromosomes. Then I am going to swap between them. They are going to exchange their information. And now you can see, dia bagi satu segment, dia bagi satu segment. Dua ada, terima, balasan yang adil. Sometimes they may give a longer segment than the other chromosome, but as long as the other chromosome receives one in return, it is still reciprocal translocation. Now let us continue with interchromosomal non-reciprocal translocation, which is between non-homologous chromosomes. So it is less common than reciprocal translocation. Dia lebih jarang. One chromosome will transfer a segment to another chromosome without receiving a segment in return. So dia akan bagi kromosom lain satu segment, tapi dia tidak menerima balasan. Interchromosomal non-reciprocal translocation is where one chromosome transfer a segment to another chromosome. Seperti kamu nampak di gambar aja ini, interchromosomal antara kromosom non-reciprocal dia tidak terima balasan dia sendiri jadi pendek. Translocation means dia pindahkan segment where one chromosome transfer a segment to another chromosome. So to demonstrate interchromosomal non-reciprocal translocation, we are once again using my paper models with the yellow and the orange chromosome. So the yellow we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G. On the orange, we have M, N, O, P, Q, R, S. Now I'm just going to stick these on the wall. You can see them there. Okay, so in this one, it is going to be translocation as well. I am going to transfer from the orange chromosome to the yellow chromosome, and it is going to be non-reciprocal. So I'm going to cut it right around here with the QRS. I've cut out the QRS, and now I'm going to translocate it to the end of the yellow chromosome. So you can see here, yellow chromosome is not reciprocating. It's not giving anything back. And the orange chromosome becomes shorter. So you can see here the difference between reciprocal interchromosomal translocation and non-reciprocal interchromosomal translocation. There is another type of translocation that is not stressed on in your syllabus, but I teach you about it anyway, which is intrachromosomal non-reciprocal translocation, which is when a segment translocate to another region of the same chromosome. Tadi inter, macam international, adalah antara kromosom. Sekarang intra, di dalam kromosom yang sama. Kamu boleh tengok macam dalam gambar raja ini, dia dari atas, dia pindah ke bawah. Tapi dia tidak kasih terbalik-terbalik. Itulah ini masih translocation. So say, for example, using this paper model, we want to demonstrate intrachromosomal non-reciprocal translocation. I'm going to cut off a segment here between E and F. And then I'm going to move that segment to another part of the chromosome. And just stick it like that. So this is now intrachromosomal non-reciprocal translocation. And I can stick this on the wall so you can see the comparison between these types of translocation. In the intrachromosomal non-reciprocal translocation. One more thing that I would like to teach you is Robertsonian translocation. Ini dia macam unique sedikit lah. Okay, Robertsonian translocation is when you have a reciprocal translocation. It involves breaks at the extreme ends of the short arms of two non-homologous chromosomes. So these are usually chromosomes 13, 14, 15, 21, and 22. Ada sesetengah kromosom. Lengan dia yang lebih pendek itu memang sangat pendek. Jadi, kadang-kadang boleh berlaku reciprocal translocation antara dua kromosom yang tidak homologous dan salah satu lengan dia sangat pendek. Contoh macam ni. Okay? 
example is in this diagram. A fusion between the whole long arms of two acrocentric chromosomes will result in Robertsonian translocation. Acrocentric, kamu nampak diagram sini, two acrocentric chromosome. Acrocentric means chromosome with a centromere located near the end. Centromere dia sangat dekat penghujung chromosome. So when you have a reciprocal translocation, it becomes one long chromosome and one very short chromosome. And because this very short chromosome is so small, it's easy for it to get lost. Okay, dia senang hilang ataupun sel itu fikir ini adalah DNA yang berlebihan, yang tidak berguna, dia akan buang. And um, this can be kind of bad because you're going to lose a lot of genes at the same time and you're going to be missing one chromosome later. So once again, I am showing you using an orange and a yellow chromosome, but this time they are not labeled. Okay, so you can see the centromere is very close to the end. This one has one very long arm, one very short arm. This one also one long arm and one short arm. So in the Robertsonian translocation, we're going to cut off here, cut off here. And we're going to allow the yellow and the orange chromosomes to join together. So this is going to form a Robertsonian translocation over there and over there. The two short arms may be able to join together. So ada kemungkinan yang dua pendek itu dapat gabung sama-sama. But because they're so short, they could get lost when the cell moves around. So you can see here. This is result of interchromosomal reciprocal translocation, interchromosomal non-reciprocal translocation, intrachromosomal reciprocal translocation, and Robertsonian translocation. So that is it for translocation. But remember, chromosomal aberration is not just about translocation, you also have inversion of the segment you can also have duplication and not to forget the very basic deletion so that is it for chromosomal aberration let us move on to the next part of this lesson this sex segment is chromosomal number alteration or sometimes referred to poly wait not poly refer to ploidy mutation so let us look at it okay this very full table is a quick summary of what you can expect from chromosomal number alteration for this part of the subtopic kita tidak akan tengok secara detail sebab ini dia lebih kepada rumusan okay so we're going to skip over to the next slide and we're going to kind of slowly dip our toe into chromosomal number mutation so when we talk about changes in chromosomal number, we can divide it into aneuploidy and polyploidy. Okay, yang pertama adalah aneuploidy, yang kedua adalah euploidy ataupun boleh juga digelar sebagai polyploidy. So before we uh, go into the details, let us think about it in terms of an organism with 2n equals to 6. Kita bayangkan kita ada satu organism yang bilangan kromosom dia Kalau 2N adalah 6 kromosom. In aneuploidy, you will have extra or less copy of a single kromosom. Kalau ini adalah individu yang ada aneuploidy, daripada 2N equals to 6, dia akan cacat, mungkin dia terlebih satu kromosom. Kalau dia terlebih satu kromosom, kita tulis sebagai 2N plus 1. Kalau dia terkurang satu kromosom, kita tulis sebagai 2n minus 1. So in this case, it has extra, it's 7. In this case, it has less, it is 5. If it is euploidy or polyploidy, that means it will have extra set of extra copy or whole sets of chromosome. So dia bukan cakap 6 jadi 7 atau 6 jadi 5. Dia 6 
jadi 9. Ataupun 6 jadi 12. You compare it to the normal diploid number. This one could be 3n and this one is 4n. Okay, let's look at aneuploidy first. First things first, definition. Aneuploidy is a condition in which one chromosome has extra copy or less copy. In humans, if the aneuploidy is in human autosomal chromosome, which is any chromosome except for the X and Y chromosome, it can be called as monosomy or trisomy. Okay, so kalau monosomy means dia kurang satu chromosome, contoh adalah monosomy 21. Monosomy 21 means yang kurang adalah chromosome number 21. You could have trisomy. Example of trisomy in human is trisomy 21 or what is referred to as Down syndrome. So that means people with Down syndrome, they have extra copy of chromosome number 21. We can also have aneuploidy in our sex chromosome. So sex chromosome in humans is the X and Y chromosome. Ada orang yang terkurang X chromosome, contohnya dalam orang yang monosomy, sex chromosome, example is Turner syndrome. Or you could have extra sex chromosome, in which case it's referred to as trisomy. You could have klein Felter syndrome, which is XXY, Super female, which is XXX, or super male, which is XYY. Okay, so um, why does aneuploidy happen? Kenapa satu saja yang terlebih atau satu saja yang terkurang? Aneuploidy is caused by non-disjunction of one chromosome. We touched on this briefly when I talked about it in 7.1. Non-disjunction is the failure of homologous chromosomes to separate during anaphase 1 of meiosis or uh, the sister chromatids will fail to separate during anaphase 2 of meiosis and thus it produces gamete with abnormal number of chromosomes. So masa meiosis tu ada part yang mereka harus berpisah yaitu pada anaphase 1 ataupun anaphase 2 tapi dia tidak berjaya pisah. Jadi salah satu gamet ada terlebih kromosom, satu lagi gamet terkurang kromosom. So if we look at this diagram over here, let's have a look at this diagram. Under normal meiotic division ataupun meiosis biasa yang tiada mutation. Daripada empat kromosom, semasa meiosis satu, homologous kromosom berjaya berpisah. Semasa meiosis dua, sister chromatid berjaya berpisah. Dan hasilnya, setiap gamet ada haploid number of chromosomes. So you can see on this diagram on the left, gamet pertama, N. Gamet kedua, N. Gamet ketiga, N. Gamet keempat, N. But what if you had non-disjunction during meiosis 1? Then we look at the diagram in the middle. Kita tengok bahagian tengah. Non-disjunction during meiosis 1, we start with four chromosomes. During meiosis 1, one of the pairs did not separate successfully. So dalam diagram ini, pasangan pertama, homologous chromosome berjaya berpisah. Pasangan kedua, homologous chromosome masih melekat. Hasilnya, bila sampai meiosis 2, salah satu sel jadi macam ni, salah satu sel jadi macam ini. Dan hasil daripada keseluruhan meiosis ini, you are going to have two gametes which have extra chromosome and two gametes which are missing one chromosome. So nampak di sini, dia bukan semua haploid, ini jadi cacat N plus 1, N plus 1, two more gametes cacat N minus 1, N minus 1. As you can see here, you could also have non-disjunction during meiosis 2 ataupun during anaphase 2. So you start with four chromosomes. Okay, during meiosis 1, everything is normal, homologous chromosomes, able to separate. But when it comes to meiosis 2, 
one of the cells is able to do normal meiosis, one of the cells is not. So, sister chromatid dia tidak terpisah. Hasilnya, satu gamet cacat, jadi N plus 1. Satu gamet cacat lagi, N minus 1. Dua gamet normal. So, this one becomes normal N. The fertilization of any of these abnormal gametes with Uh, with a normal gamete will produce a nucleoid. So, kalau yang terlebih kromosom ini gabung dengan gamete yang biasa, yang N, dia akan hasilkan individu yang ada trisom. Kalau gamete yang kekurangan satu kromosom dipersenyawakan dengan satu gamete yang biasa, dia akan menghasilkan individu yang monosomi. I hope that is clear. If you are still confused, please feel free to ask questions. Okay, so what happens after aneuploidy? Apa kesan dia lah lepas aneuploidy berlaku? Kena apa-apa kan? Masih sama juga kan do? In humans, if you get aneuploidy, it is usually pretty harmful. Um, so we'll look at some examples to see how it can be harmful. In your autosomal chromosome, contohnya kalau kita ada monosomi, contoh monosomi 21, it is because of non-disjunction of chromosome 21 during meiosis, it produces abnormal gamete with no chromosome 21. So salah satu gamete itu, dia akan kekurang chromosome 21 when, it, when the abnormal gamete N-1 with no chromosome 21 is fertilized by a normal gamete. It will produce monosomy 21 zygote, which carries 45 chromosomes with only one copy of chromosome 21. Another example of aneuploidy in autosomal chromosome is trisomy 21, or referred to as Down syndrome. It is also because of non-disjunction of chromosome 21 during meiosis, which produces abnormal gamete with two copies of chromosome 21. So it is referred to as N plus 1. And when that abnormal gamete with N plus 1, with two copies of chromosome 21, is fertilized by normal gamete, Down syndrome or trisomy 21 zygote, which carries 47 chromosomes with two copies of chromosome 21, will be formed. Ini adalah explanation yang lebih kurang apa yang saya jelaskan dalam gambar raja tadi. Kalau kamu kena minta untuk jawab soalan ber dalam essay, okay, contoh soalan essay, explain how aneuploidy can lead to harmful effect. Uh, tidaklah. Contoh soalan kamu adalah can explain how non disjunction can lead to aneuploidy. Ataupun explain how non disjunction can lead to monosomy 21. Then kamu boleh cuba explain seperti ayat-ayat di sini. Okay, so non junction of monosomy 21 will produce blah blah blah, blah monosomy 21 Down syndrome. Okay, so this is how it can occur. Ini gambar raja untuk menjelaskan lagi macam mana uh, monosomy 21 atau Trisomy 21 boleh berlaku. So, let us look at the effect of aneuploidy in autosomal chromosomes of humans. We look at the example of monosomy 21. So, a common symptom of individuals with monosomy 21 is they may have short distance between the eyes, large ears, and contracted muscle. So, this is a picture, okay? An example of someone with monosomy 21 can live a normal happy life uh, maybe with some health complications and if we look at his karyotype under the microscope it will look like this its chromosome 21 has only one copy if you would like to learn more about individuals with monosomy 21 go ahead and read that but don't be surprised if if you try to google it it doesn't come up with very clear distinctions Okay, so kadang-kadang individu tu ada monosomi 21, tapi dia punya simptom dari segi luaran tidak ketara. Ada yang sangat ketara, ada yang tidak berapa ketara. And that is completely normal. 
Okay, and we're going to look at the trisomy example as well. So the example for trisomy in autosomes is Down syndrome or trisomy 21, where you have extra one chromosome at chromosome 21. The common symptoms of Down syndrome individuals are they have short stature, flattened nose, protruding tongue, upward, upward slanting eyes, short and broad hands, short fingers, growth, and mental usually is retarded, heart defects and gastrointestinal abnormalities, shorter lifespan and are often sexually underdeveloped and sterile. Okay, so ini adalah uh, list symptom yang umum, yang general. Ini adalah karyotype mereka kalau kamu tengok di bawah microscope. Dan ini adalah contoh gambar-gambar individu yang ada Down syndrome. Now you are in the age of internet, so it's a lot easier for you to learn more about individuals with Down syndrome. Okay, mesti kamu sudah nampak gambar dia ka, video dia ka, cerita dia ka di internet. So please remember, although we are learning these as biological knowledge, try not to be rude to people who have disabilities. Okay, whether you want to refer to them as individuals with disabilities or disabled individuals, blah, blah, blah. macam mana lah kamu mau refer, pastikan kamu tidak sengaja menyinggung hati mereka. Okay, usually in in medical terms, we can say retarded, tapi janganlah berdepan dengan orang kamu gunakan perkataan retarded, itu agak biadab. So, gunakanlah bahasa yang sopan semasa merujuk kepada individu yang mempunyai Down syndrome dan apa-apa penyakit genetik lain. And I would also like to remind you that individuals with Down syndrome are real individuals. They have their wants, their hopes, their needs. Dirang pun ada perasaan, kemahuan, kehendak macam kita. Okay, jadi jangan labia dap. And another issue I would bring up is that individuals with Down syndrome are usually the target of health discrimination. Okay, walaupun dia sudah dewasa, kadang kita tengok dia sebagai budak-budak sebab kita anggap bahwa mereka tiada capacity dari segi mental untuk faham apa yang kita buat. That's not good. And kalau kita cakap pasal isu uh, abortion, okay, sengaja gugurkan anak atas apa-apa sebab pun, biasanya individu-individu seperti Down syndrome dan uh, individu yang ada penyakit genetik lain usually akan jadi target pertama untuk uh, isu abortion ni. So please be kind when you're navigating around issues with Down syndrome and other genetic disorders. Okay, so itu saja iklan sebentar untuk aneuploidy in autosome. Now let us talk about aneuploidy in sex chromosome. So when you have aneuploidy in sex chromosome, we need to look at Did it happen in the sperm or did it happen in the ovum? Okay, adakah oh, itu sperm yang cacat ataupun itu ovum yang cacat? Kalau sperm itu yang cacat, ini adalah senarai penyakit yang mungkin berlaku. Mungkin dia ada Klinefelter, mungkin super male, mungkin super female, mungkin Turner syndrome. Kalau ovum yang cacat, yang ada abnormality, mungkin Turner syndrome, mungkin miscarriage, mungkin Klinefelter, mungkin super female. We are not going to cover everything in this video, but we are going to focus a bit more on Klinefelter, Turner Syndrome, and YO. Nanti kita tengok setiap tiga ini. Yang lain itu boleh belajar sendiri. Alright, so let's look at a few examples of effects of aneuploidy of sex chromosome in humans. First is Turner Syndrome. Turner syndrome uh, adalah apabila individu itu ada 45 kromosom dan dia cuma ada satu X kromosom. Okay, so you can write it as 45,XO or you can write it as 44 plus XO. Ini cara kamu mau tulis kalau kamu mau ringkasan untuk Turner syndrome. Kita mungkin juga dapat monosomi di mana individu itu ada Y kromosom sahaja tiada X kromosom. In this case, the fetus will not survive. Okay, so let's look at Turner syndrome. Turner syndrome is caused by non-disjunction of sex chromosome during meiosis. 
that produce abnormal gamete with no X chromosome, 22 plus 0. So, ini uh, gambaran saya. Ini adalah gamete yang tiada X chromosome. When the abnormal gamete with no copy of X chromosome or Y chromosome is fertilized by a normal gamete, which is 22 plus X, it's going to produce an individual with Turner syndrome. Turner syndrome will individual will carry 45 syndromes. Eh, sorry. Shashul. Turner syndrome individual carries 45 chromosomes with one copy of X chromosome, and that will be Okay, daripada yang kosong, tambah dengan yang ada X, jadi 44 kromosom dengan 1 X kromosom. Another example of monosomy in sex kromosom is YO, in which the fetus will die or miscarry. So this is because of non-disjunction of sex kromosom during meiosis that produce abnormal ovum with no X kromosom. When the abnormal gamete with no copy of X chromosome is fertilized by normal sperm with 22 chromosomes and Y chromosome, Y or zygote that carries 45 chromosomes with no copy of X chromosomes will be formed but will die during fetus stage or miscarriage. Okay, zygote yang terhasil daripada Y chromosome saja, tiada X chromosome, Tidak akan survive. Sebab X kromosom kita mengandungi banyak gene yang sangat-sangat penting untuk tumbesaran dalam kandungan. Dan also in general. Okay, so a lot of your essential genes are located on the X chromosome. If you do not have the X chromosome, you as a fetus or as an individual will not have any chance of survival. Kadang-kadang tidak terbentuk fetus pun akan gugur dalam kandungan. So that's an example of YO. Okay, so let us look at the symptoms of a person with Turner syndrome. Tadi kita cakap pasal penyakit dia dan macam mana mau explain dalam essay. Sekarang kita tengok orang dia macam mana. So individuals with Turner syndrome experience a type of monosomy. And individuals with Turner syndrome will always be female. The common symptoms are they are usually sterile female. They may have underdeveloped breasts. They may be dwarf in size. Okay, they'll be fertile. Uh, they may be deaf. They may have abnormal heart, but they can have normal intelligence. This is what their karyotype will look like. If you look at their chromosomes, they will have one X chromosome. No extra X, no Y chromosomes. And this is the example picture that is given to you in the notes. But I would like you to look past the medical labels. Let's look beyond the medical labels. And in this age of technology, listen to real individuals with real stories who tell you their side of their situation. Okay, jadi boleh pergi tengok. YouTube video Women and Girls with Turner Syndrome that I included the link for. You can also scan this QR code and basically listen to their side of the story with their voices. And I hope you can see that these individuals are not chachat. They, I mean, in terms of medicine, boleh cakap mereka ada disability, ada kurang upaya. Tapi mereka juga individu yang ada kemahuan, keinginan, dan ada hidup yang penuh bermakna. Okay. And we're also going to look at the trisomy case. Okay, tadi itu adalah monosomy. Ini adalah untuk trisomy. So this is, um, we're going to look at the Kleinfelter syndrome in which the person has 47 chromosomes. The sex chromosome is XXY. So, kamu boleh tulis sebagai 47,XXY ataupun tulis sebagai 44 plus XXY. It can also lead to super male syndrome. Super male syndrome is when you have extra Y chromosome. Super female is when you have extra X chromosome. Okay, let's look at the example of Kleinfelter syndrome. 
Klein-Delta syndrome is non-disjunction of sex chromosome during meiosis produce abnormal ovum with extra copy of X chromosome, or it can produce abnormal sperm with extra copy of extra copy of X or Y chromosome. Let us try to go through this sentence by sentence using some diagrams. So non-disjunction of X chromosome of sex chromosome during meiosis may produce abnormal ovum. Okay, kalau abnormal ovum, yang nampak macam ni, yang warna hijau. Or abnormal sperm. Kalau abnormal sperm means dia ada extra X chromosome, macam ini. If this abnormal ovum with extra copy of X chromosome, yang di atas, is fertilized by normal sperm with Y chromosome, Klein-Felter syndrome zygote of 47 chromosomes with extra X chromosomes, 44 plus XXY will be formed. So, kalau dia begini, dia gabung, dia akan jadi XXY punya zygote. Let's look at the bottom diagram. If the abnormal sperm with extra copy of X chromosome fertilized a normal ovum, so normal ovum macam ni, Klein-Felter syndrome zygote of 47 chromosomes with extra X chromosomes will be formed. So, dua situasi ini akan menghasilkan zygote yang ada XXY. Ingat, ini adalah explanation untuk Klein-Felter syndrome, which is 47 XXY. Alright, so let us look at the symptoms of a person with Klein-Felter syndrome. So, ini adalah list explanation. Apa benda itu Klein-Felter syndrome? Ini adalah list symptoms biasa. So, normal sim or common symptoms of individuals with Klein-Felter is they may be sterile, they may have small testicles which fail to produce sperm, they may have feminine body characteristics in which they may have a soft voice or their they may have some development of breast tissue. They may have longer hands and legs and may have lower IQ. Okay, so this is what the karyotype looks like and this is what the medical textbook diagram of a person with Klein-Felter would look like. Okay, so kali lagi saya ingatkan, when we're learning about these things, these are generalized symptoms that we learn about in medical textbooks and in biology textbook. Uh, when you are seeing a person with Klein-Felter, they may not be what you expect. So once again, look beyond the medical labels. We are in the age of internet. Go and learn about these individuals from the individuals themselves. Okay, remember that they are people with medical symptoms. The medical symptom is not everything about them. So this is a, a man who has Klein-Felter syndrome. As you can see, it looks relatively normal. You can go ahead to his YouTube channel. He shows a lot of stories. This video that I have here is from 2018. Of course, he has grown so much since then. You can go to his channel, listen to his story, and also you can learn about the medical therapies that he's going through. So, bukan dia kena biar saja begitu. Ada juga treatment untuk dia supaya dia dapat hidup Dia, dia, dia. Beliau dapat hidup uh, dengan lebih bermakna dan kalau ada apa-apa masalah dari segi kesihatan yang disebabkan oleh Klein-Felter, ada ubat untuk tangani simptom-simptom tersebut. Okay, so go ahead and have a listen. You can scan the QR code, go for the link. Go and learn. And that is it for aneuploidy. Ingat aneuploidy tadi kita ada cakap pasal aneuploidy dalam autosom seperti Down syndrome dan aneuploidy dalam sex chromosome seperti Turner syndrome dan Klein-Felter syndrome. Let us continue with polyploidy. This is the last segment in 7.3. So if before, when we talk about aneuploidy, we were talking about extra one chromosome or missing one chromosome, in polyploidy, we're talking about a condition in which organism possess more than two complete sets. So dia bukan sahaja 2N, mungkin dia 3N, 4N, 5N, 6N, dan sebagainya. Under polyploidy, we divide it into two more types. 
di bawah polyploidy ada auto polyploidy which is a condition of an individual has more than two sets of chromosomes both of which are from the same parent species or it can be allo polyploidy jenis kedua adalah allo polyploidy a condition of an individual has more than two sets of chromosomes both of which are from different parental species now how can polyploidy happen what is the because Puncak polyploidy mungkin sebab non-disjunction semasa meiosis ataupun non-disjunction semasa mitosis. So let's look at the meiosis scenario. Non-disjunction might occur to the whole set of chromosomes during meiosis. It might occur to all homologous chromosomes in anaphase 1 of meiosis like this or it can occur to all sister chromatids in anaphase 2 of meiosis. So mungkin macam ni. Thus, it will be producing abnormal gamete of 2N with additional set of chromosomes or missing sets of chromosomes. So, macam di sini, dia bukan saja N tambah 1 atau N tolak 1. Sekarang dia adalah 2N ataupun kosong. And it can also occur because of non-disjunction during mitosis. Kalau mitosis, macam mana pula? Sister chromatids will fail to separate and move to opposite poles and thus producing a polyploid cell or a new cell with additional set of chromosomes. So, sepatutnya mitosis, dia mengekalkan bilangan kromosom yang sama tapi sebab ada non-disjunction, dia daripada 2N, pada penghujung mitosis, dia hasilkan 4N. Especially in plants, propagation of asexual reproduction of polyploid cell will arise more polyploid cells. So, kalau ini sudah terjadi 4N, selepas ini bila dia buat mitosis, dia akan kekalkan number 4N. Dia tidak akan balik kepada 2N. Alright, so this is once again a diagram of normal mitosis. Normal mitosis, you would produce diploid cells. Mitosis with non-disjunction. The non-disjunction may be caused by mutagens such as colchicine. It's going to produce tetraploid cells. Ingat, colchicine yang macam kita belajar dalam 7.1 adalah sejenis chemical mutagen. This colchicine will cause spindle fibers to fail. And therefore, the chromosomes cannot separate and you have cells that have tetraploidy, that have extra sets of chromosomes. So this is an example of formation of autopolyploid. Okay, ini ada beberapa contoh macam mana autopolyploidy boleh berlaku. Contoh pertama adalah dalam satu sel from the diploid parent, ada non-disjunction during meiosis. So instead of producing N gametes, it produces 2N or diploid gametes. When the diploid gamete meets another diploid gamete, it will form a tetraploid offspring in which it is producing 4N. Another example is you could have a 4N individual. A 4N individual like this. It produces a diploid gamete during meiosis. The diploid gamete meets a normal hap haploid gamete fertilize and become triploid offspring. The triploid can have gametes with uneven chromosome number. So, di sini sudah nampak autopolyploidy pertama dan di sini ada autopolyploidy juga. Okay, so what is the effect of polyploidy? Polyploidy is usually harmful to humans but it can be beneficial for plants. Because in humans, it is very rare and most fetus or infants will die spontaneously. Whereas in plants, it's beneficial and actually quite common. It's common and sometimes we do it on purpose. Kadang-kadang kita sengaja menyebabkan tumbuhan itu ada polyploidy sebab bila tumbuhan ada polyploidy, dia akan ada banyak ciri-ciri yang kita suka. When plants have polyploidy, it is going to show good traits that we want, such as seedless and bigger fruits. 
Okay, examples of plants that we purposely make polyploidy is potatoes, bananas, apples, triticale, which is a combination of wheat and rye, dua jenis gandum, and cabbage. And we are going to look at it more clearly with autopolyploidy. Autopolyploidy, definisi dia adalah a condition of an individual has more than two sets of chromosomes, both of which are from the same parental species. Jadi kalau species yang kita tengok ini adalah rumput, dia, ada, dia adalah dalam species rumput yang sama. Kalau species yang kita tengok ini adalah pokok apple, then dia adalah species apple yang sama. A parrot will produce unreduced gamete with extra set of chromosomes due to non-disjunction during meiosis. And the unreduced gametes will undergo self-fertilization and autopolyploid zygote will be produced. Ini adalah cara pertama macam mana individu autopolyploid boleh terhasil. Okay? Masa dia hasilkan gamet, ada non-disjunction. Gamet dia ada extra kromosom. Jadi bila gamet daripada individu yang sama itu fertilize, dia akan hasilkan anak, offspring yang ada extra sets of chromosomes. This is an example seen in plants. Okay, ini adalah contoh yang kita boleh nampak dalam tumbuhan. So the second type of polyploidy is allopolyploidy. It is a condition of an individual that has more than two sets of chromosomes, both of which are from different parental species. Okay, so dia berasal daripada dua species yang berbeza kalau dalam tumbuhan. Okay, in plants, we can use the example of wheat and rye, or we can use the examples of apples and oranges. Uh, we can also use an example of animals. Examples of animals that could have allopolyploidy is between a tiger and a lion. So, ini adalah dua species yang berbeza, tapi mereka boleh bersetubu dan boleh menghasilkan anak. Tapi anak dia dapat jadi fertile atau tidak, itu belakang cerita. Okay, so allopoly, allopolyploidy occurs when two closely related species mate and produce a hybrid containing chromosome set from both parents. The resulting hybrid is usually sterile because the chromosome from each species cannot pair correctly during meiosis. Okay, so bila uh, dua species itu menghasilkan anak, Anak itu akan ada kromosom dari kedua ibu bapa dia. Walaupun kedua ibu bapa dia spesies berbeza. Tapi anak itu mungkin tidak dapat menghasilkan zuriat dia sendiri sebab bilangan kromosom dalam dia, kromosom dalam diri dia tidak dapat melakukan meiosis dengan betul untuk menghasilkan gamet yang betul, yang sihat. Kalau kita dapat kasih double kromosom number dalam hybrid itu, dalam anak itu, baru dia boleh menjadi fertile, baru dia boleh menjadi subur, baru dia boleh apa menghasilkan zuriat dia sendiri. Okay? Doubling the kromosom number in a sterile hybrid can often produce a fertile hybrid. The two different species involved can also contribute different numbers of chromosomes, which again prevents the chromosome pairing during meiosis, rendering the hybrid sterile. Okay, salah satu sebab kenapa anak daripada dua species itu tidak dapat hasilkan gamet yang yang baik, okay, adalah sebab mama dia mungkin bagi dia lima kromosom. Bapak dia mungkin bagi dia tujuh kromosom. So dalam badan dia, dia ada dua belas kromosom, tapi dua belas kromosom itu tidak dapat berpasangan dengan satu sama lain. Okay, it's not producing the the same number of kromosom, so there is no homologous pair. If you are able to double the kromosom number in the sterile hybrid, mungkin daripada lima tambah tujuh itu tiga belas kan? Dari 13 tu kita kasih allopolyploidy, kita hasilkan 26 kromosom, then dia boleh jadi subur dan dia boleh hasilkan zuliatnya sendiri. Okay, so an example that we're going to talk about is uh, polyploidy in two different types of 
plants. Okay, this first plant is raphanus, which has 2n equals to 18. And this brassica plant, which is 2n equals to 18. Bila mereka menghasilkan gamet, setiap daripada gamet dia ada 9 kromosom, ini pun 9 kromosom. Same number of kromosoms. But, the F1 generation is still sterile. Sebab walaupun dia ada same number of kromosom, kromosom itu tidak sama bentuk. The 9 kromosoms from the raphanus and the 9 kromosoms from the brassica are not homologous to each other. So, they will not pair up during meiosis. No meiosis can occur and no gametes can be produced. But if by any reason at all, it happens a doubling of chromosome. Kalau ap, mungkin sebarang sebab lah, apa-apa sebab saja, di sini berlaku allopolyploidy. Dia terdouble dia punya chromosome number. Then dia akan jadi fertile. Lepas dia double sudah dia punya kromosom number, sekarang dia punya kromosom jadi 36. 36 itu boleh buat pairing semasa meiosis. Jadi dia boleh hasilkan meiosis, dia boleh dia boleh jalankan meiosis, dia boleh hasilkan gamet yang sihat sudah. Dan ini adalah hybrid hybrid plant from Raphanus and Brassica now called Raphano Brassica. Okay, so another example of allopolyploidy is in this wheat plant, tumbuhan gandum. Gandum jenis pertama, ini adalah trichicum monococcum. Gandum kedua adalah wild trichum. Okay, so this one will have AA, BB, dia akan produce sterile hybrid. Kalau ada, uh, the, the sterile hybrid is sterile because there's no homologous chromosomes, no meiosis, no gametes. If you are able to double the chromosome number, then you will have a fertile hybrid produced. The F2 generation will be high, will be fertile because you can have pairing of homologous chromosomes, there can be meiosis, and there can be gametes produced. Okay. Satu lagi saya mau tekankan, okay, ini, ini macam di luar silibus kamu sedikit lah. Tapi kalau kita cakap pasal allopolyploidy, Pada peringkat parent dia, parent dia yang normal, kita boleh gunakan 2n equals to 14 dan 2n equals to 14. Bila dia sudah jadi hybrid, biasanya kita tidak gunakan number 2n sudah. Kita cuma tulis dia adalah 14 kromosom. Bila dia sudah allopolyploidy, dia sudah boleh hasilkan fertile, uh, dia sudah jadi fertile hybrid. Barulah kita akan merujuk dia kepada 2N. So, here baru kita tulis dia sebagai 2N atau 4N equals to 42 chromosomes. So, setengah soalan untuk chapter ini akan minta kamu kira. Okay, kalau parent dia 14 kromosom, parent, parent kedua 7 kromosom, anak dia macam mana? Kalau dia sudah jadi fertile, berapa kromosom dia? So, we'll have a look at the tutorial questions after this to discuss that stuff. Okay. All right. So this is more extra notes on allopolyploidy between two different species in plants. Okay. More examples of polyploidy. So this is octopolyploidy strawberries and triploid seedless watermelons. Uh, more examples of polyploidy polyploid strawberries or the commercial strawberries yang kamu boleh beli di supermarket adalah begini lebih besar tapi kalau yang wild yang uh, tiada polyploidy memang hidup liar dia akan lebih kecil macam ini okay so more auto polyploidy applications if you treat a plant with colchicin you can have auto polyploidy thus you have larger flowers and or fruits the plants are usually sterile and sometimes seedless that means it's easier for us to eat Okay, this is more examples of alloploidy. Allopolyploidy. Okay, so sebelum saya pergi kepada quick summary, saya cuma mau ingatkan. Okay, the learning outcomes for polyploidy is actually quite short. Asalkan kamu dapat jelaskan definisi polyploidy bagi definisi ringkas untuk autopolyploidy, definisi ringkas untuk 
alo poliploid dan mungkin ingat beberapa ayat yang ada dalam slide sebelum ni itu okey sudah tidak perlu explain secara detail macam cara saya explain dalam video ini sebab cara saya explain adalah untuk membantu kamu faham tidak semestinya untuk kamu hafal if you want to know exactly what you should remember do the past year questions so that you are more familiar with the questions and what they usually ask you to remember okay so yeah all right so let's have a quick summary of the chapter uh the subtopic 7.3 we started with chromosomal aberration we learned translocation inversion duplication deletion for deletion remember the credu shot syndrome okay the credu shot disease and then we learn about chromosomal number mutation. Under chromosomal number mutation, we have aneuploidy and polyploidy. Aneuploidy, we have trisomy and monosomy. Um, it can occur on the autosome or the sex chromosome. So please remember the Klinefelter syndrome, Turner syndrome, Down syndrome, and monosomy 21. For polyploidy, we have autopolyploidy and allopolyploidy. Remember the definition and also maybe try to explain using non-disjunction in meiosis and non-disjunction during mitosis. Itu sahaja untuk chapter 7. Okay, so what should you do now? Now that we finished the chapter, please come up with your own notes and complete the chapter 7 tutorial questions. If you have time, also do the past your questions and we will discuss this in our next lesson. That's all from me. Thank you very much for your time and your attention and I will see you again in the next lesson. Bye!